there have to stop putting the boxing gloves on and stop fighting about to about to go into war. Do you guys remember the movie Tom Hanks' uh, Money Pit? How long oh, is it going to take? Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Open Sea is uh, two weeks. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Picture Freedom. And today's podcast, we're talking about marketplaces, notably the ones where you can trade NFTs on. It's between OpenSea and Blur, which were riled up today or this week in the news on trading volume. So, fellas, what have you heard in the news? Well, I think that uh, well, I think Blur and OpenSea has been in battle for much longer than what's on the news. I've heard that it's. Uh, um, well, from my understanding is that there's a royalty battle going on at the moment. And I think OpenSea wants to give royalties to the artist and Blur is making it optional. Is that, is that what it is right now? Well, it gets a bit confusing when you start to read between them. The way I understood it was they're both in favor of royalties, bar none, at least to date. But the way that OpenSea is going about trying to enforce them across all platforms is detrimental to how Blur does it. So they're like OpenSea, they gave people like a snippet of code to put in their smart contracts to prevent other marketplaces from trading them if those marketplaces don't support the royalties. So OpenSea is trying to protect its users from minting on their platform, wanting royalties, and somebody going and selling it on another platform and that royalty somehow getting stripped out or just not being enforced. But the way that they made that code made it so that Blur's royalties wouldn't quite work. And that's as best I could understand the issue. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't get it, but I, I do know what I want to talk about. It's like, what, what if that technical jargon is around what they're fighting against? Mm-hmm. I don't see the creators involved. <laughs> so that's an interesting point because... Yep. For those who don't know, Blur is really strictly a trading platform. You don't go on it like OpenSea and mint your NFTs and do the listings on that. It's really, they call it for like the power, the pro traders. It looks much more like a stock trading platform. Exactly. It looks totally yeah. different than if you go on OpenSea, which looks like a marketplace as we understand it, which is very nicely laid out. You can search for different things. But you look at Blur, and it's really for those that are trading in volume. Um, So it's a very different kind of use case if you think about it. But of course, once they surpassed OpenSea in trading volume, yeah, that's that's a big hit to OpenSea, who were the king of that for quite some time. Well, I think I think I think with Blur and OpenSea, well, I mean, the the first I mean, the first problem is this: it's like, okay, what a war that is. But I think Blur and OpenSea lost focus on what Web3 entity is supposed to be about. That right now, they're making it as just... What they're doing right now is just they're promoting trades of entities. Yep, yep. And that's a huge problem about within the space. It's not good for the entity space at all. Because right now, it's only for really for the blue chip companies. I mean, the blue chip entities. The small players, they're, they're, they're not even getting their entities sold anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But... But in my opinion, it's like NFT is not a stock. And and I, I would say 98% of the people in the Web3 market treat it as a stock, as a mm-hmm. trade only. And they don't treat it as a technology that can do better things, that can do great things with it. So that's the biggest problem. That's, that's my biggest problem on that one. Number two is that obviously I heard, you know, like first of all, what OpenSea is actually doing and this is from my attorneys, and I'm gonna, you know, and they they're saying they're doing a lot of security. It, they're having a lot of issues, compliance issues at the moment. And like is SEC, this, SEC's type stuff? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And um, we don't talk about that on Twitter a lot. On Twitter, uh, on 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 um, what is it called? Uh, Twitter space. Twitter space. Oh my God, called it Twitter Live. <laughs> Twitter Live. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it does feel like live. <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk about Twitter Spaces. OpenSea is the premier one, but they're gonna get. I heard that they're gonna they're in big trouble at the moment. And marketplaces that are not following because what's happening right now. This is what I'm hearing. If you're trading, if you're doing secondary trades of NFTs that involve securities, meaning like if you're the platform and then you're the NFT project, uh, but then you're the platform that is allowing for secondary trades to happen 
and is giving you equity from a project where it is, technically OpenSea is in the hunting grounds as well. Mm-hmm. And I heard that that, that that's, uh, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just making conversation over here mm. to be aware of that. You have to be aware of it. As a resp- if you're if you're on NFTs, is gonna be it's being treated as securities because people are giving away NFTs as equity to a company. Yet they don't they're not registered to do securities. Right. They can go to jail for that shit. Yeah, and just sir, for the yeah. people who uh, don't know the lingo at all, the SEC is the Security and Exchange Commission. They regulate a lot of the things much. Uh, like in the stock market, you may think stocks are just bought and sold and no one cares, whatever it is. It just seems like the Wild West. But there's a lot of laws about that. And if you're giving it away things like equity, like Qua just said, you have to abide by a lot of laws to do that. And right now, NFTs, a lot of places are doing likely exactly that and getting away with it because the SEC, the IRS, and all those industries, uh, government agencies, haven't quite caught up to this new technology yet. But once they do... A lot of these places like OpenSea may have a problem. Uh, look, my, I, um, my attorney had, uh, had, uh, had said that, I said, don't even think about following OpenSea's protocols. He says they're about to go into a big trouble at the moment. And, and, they, and they, they were actually telling me, he said, you are in a very good position, Qua, because you're thinking about, you're asking the right questions of how to protect people, how you create full disclosures, how to use NFTs, how you're doing it, how you're doing it right so you don't screw people over. They said, you're doing it right. It's costing you a lot of money to do that work, for sure, mm-hmm. but but you're not, but you know what OpenSea is doing right now and what other marketplaces are doing, I think they're in. They they're gonna. Have to, they're either have to put their stop putting their boxing uh, boxing gloves on, and start fighting about to about to go into war. We're not. We're, that's really really interesting, because we've been preaching and praying these these this talk for since last year. We've been right. talking about this for last year, and and the funny thing is that it's always platform to platform creators. Are like in uh they they're like commodities. They're mm-hmm. not they're not even they. Why is Blur and OpenC talking about other people's royalties when the creator's supposed to be stepping in front of it, talking about their own royalties? Yeah, you get kind of it's dejected weird. when it's like it seems like the market is all about well, like let's just like the stock market. People don't really that trade in the stocks. They care about a company usually just to the extent that they think the company's going to make them money. You know, like sure. I've never actually owned Apple products, but I've owned Apple stock because I know and believe in what they make mm. meets a lot of people's desires. So mm. when people are starting to buy and sell these NFTs, they may be taking the same approach where they don't really care about the product or service that might be underlying in that NFT if it's more than just the profile pic or image or art. And they're just looking to see what the next best trade is. And that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. It's just us as creators, we kind of care more about the creation and the creator aspect of things versus people that are just got like 10 screens all with trading stats up and seeing, okay, this NFT project is going to make me this many thousands of dollars today. The next one may thousand. And I don't care about them after the fact. That's just not us. But you know, I, I, you know, like, I, I, I wish these platforms like Blur and OpenSea and all these giant, gigantic marketplaces are trying to fix, solve problems, but they're not on the news that solve any problem. They're talking about royalties, artists, royalties, royalties to sell digital art. And really, if, when you look at it, it's only the top, like, what, top 15, top 20 NFT players. That's really, right. really making mm-hmm. the majority of the sales. Yeah. What happens to the, I don't know how many people are in this, actually in the space, let's say a, a million people in the space make, doing anything in it, you know? And they're really not at all. And so, well, you know. It doesn't make them any different than any other pro- platform if the top percentage of the projects uh, um, are the most valued and the artists are getting, you know, their, their cut for the royalties on it, but then the rest of the 80% of the projects are on the platform are, are valueless. Think about this. Moonbirds just recently made two hundred million dollars in secondary trades in two days. Well, that probably made a nice chunk for OpenSea, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and for the original OpenSea, people who started the project, sure. But OpenSea, it's seemingly their reaction to when Blur surpassed them in trading volume. Maybe it was totally unrelated, but it seemed like a good coincidence that they decided to suspend their fee the fees, for yeah. a temporary period of time. They have a page right now that says temporarily 0% in fees. So. Well, first of all, for those who don't know OpenSea, OpenSea is the largest NFT market out there, right? To sell NFTs. And if you don't know NFTs, that's a different story. So OpenSea, their royalty system is that they withhold royalties for two to four weeks. Sometimes you might get paid early or not, but they, right. they withhold it. Yep. Why do they withhold it? My guess is that they use it for interest, right? They take the, they reinvest the money into something else so they can get interest out of it. And then they pay and then they, they send the money back to people's wallets after two to four weeks. Kind of defeats the purpose of blockchain and royalty incentive for NFTs, right? Because uh, it's I, no different uh, than banks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, you know I, I mean, my best guess would be is that they're just they're doing that because they want to have. It's probably on the back end where that many things going on probably costs them a lot of money, so they group them together to make it cheaper. But we're all just you know, it's speculation about. What their actual reason is, but yeah, it does kind of defeat the bl- purpose of Web three to not have things happen as quickly as possible because otherwise, like Joe just said, it's like oh, they're just like another bank because holds because, under your money. because it's cra- it blows my mind because you know I mean since we were developing our own platform, we've been always gung ho on on how how our royalties split, right? Within the, you know, within a single transaction, split to 10 different wallets and how fast and how quick and, you know, how transparent it is. And we've been so gung-ho on that. And then I find out that one of the largest markets don't even do automatic royalties. You know, hey. you guys, uh, exactly. it's you guys, crazy. Uh, do you guys remember the movie Tom Hanks, uh, Money Pit? The contractor? How long is oh, it going to take? Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Open sea is uh, two weeks. <laughs> So regardless, no matter what, I think Blur and Overseas, okay, let them have that war. It's actually pretty good for the space around the, the PR around it, mm-hmm. but it's really bad in the long term of things to get to create that perception that entity is for trading only. Yeah, it's and a trade war. That's it's it. a trade war, and it's like nobody talks about anything else. It's like yeah, it's... what what happened to the reality of, of deeds and car titles? What happens to using Web three commerce and selling and owning digital assets so you could build your business and and not just by trading, you know? And and it, it seems like the talks of this is getting worse because nobody talks about it anymore. It's yeah, like, it's, it's right? it can get stagnated. Right. We we all believe it's gonna be a big part of the future. But how quickly it gets there really depends on where the conver- the biggest conversations are. And sure, those are probably a detriment. But we do hear a lot about new things coming out, like you said, like the deeds, car titles, those interesting things. But there needs to be a lot more of that conversation put so people are aware of this technology and know that it's not just for people buying and selling and trading assets they don't really care about other than for the money. Oh, That's right. The other thing to add is that Blur isn't a platform where you mint NFTs and create projects. Anyway. You can't mint on Blur? No. no. It's only for trading. And it's only for, I heard it's only Ethereum as well. They don't do any yeah. other coins. Ethereum. And they surpassed OpenSea in volume. Mm-hmm. It shows how small the market is. Well, the thing is, is well, you <laughs> think, think about it. You got, you got thousands of freaking other coins and other things in their chains. If, and stuff. If, you, if you go on there and look at it and see how they're advertising, how it operates, you, you'll understand just how they got there because their whole thing, their pitch is how fast you can trade, how quickly they can get you the information so you can make trades as quickly as possible. Like they're, really, they're like the Amazon checkout of NFT But you know trading. what? Like, good for Blur. Good for mm-hmm. Blur for doing something like that because it, it, they, they went to get theirs, right? And that's okay. That's okay. But they seem to be the only thing on the news when it comes to NFTs. Well, this week. You know, but that's weird. Yeah, but right. I, you know, but then when we don't hear about like cool, innovative projects from where it is, because I think the industry, I think this is the marketplace. The marketplace, I think ninety eight percent don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, the, the so traders too. are the traders. Mm-hmm. Maybe the two percent that actually cares, like probably us. Maybe the world, maybe we're the one percent of that market. Because right. we're in Polygon as well. It seems like nobody cares about Polygon and NFT Polygon or anything like that, right? And so it's it's. I feel like it's a um, 
Um, I, I feel like anyone that's playing in the space, developing in the space, you, I say like if you could survive, do it for the next five to eight years, then I think I think there's a big uh, um, I, I think there's I think that's that's the answer, because right now I think that. You know, I, I was hoping. I'm disappointed, to be honest. I'm really disappointed to see the blur and open sea war. It's like, I I feel like it's like they they, they didn't grow. People didn't. Yeah, grow. they like missed the message. You know, they missed it. They they totally missed the they missed the point of an NFT. They missed it. And yeah, the very companies like that sometimes they don't think to innovate. Like, I think it's very nice for them to have their market, and that's great. And they're doing very well, obviously. It's just not our For now. market. Yeah, it's just, it's just not <laughs> our market because we look at that. It's like, oh, they kind of designed this for one type of thing, and it's not the type of thing we're trying to develop. And that's great because, sure, people want to go on there. I think once we're really steamrolling, we're not going to want those types of people on our service, and they're not going to want to be on our service because it's just a different market. Yeah. And that's kind of the beauty right now is there's all these different marketplaces and platforms that kind of have a different niche and different purpose. So someone that wants to get into any of these industries, True. they look and see which one is the one for them. And there isn't really like an Amazon.com of all of this that does everything. And I think that's good because then it's a little, at least a little more specialized. Well put, well yeah. put. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us today on Picture Freedom. Don't forget to visit links.situdu.com. That's L-I-N-K-S dot S-U-T-U-D-U dot com. We got some free giveaways for some NFTs. Check it out and we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching Picture Freedom. If you like what you see and want to keep up to date with us, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on our channel to check out all our content. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on the next episode.